I just uh, needed my camera and turned it off. Okay. Hello. Myrtle is transferring a laptop to his roommate. Oh. Cats, come on. Come on, the cats. There's some cat disagreements going on down there. Tiny Between. King and Fat Tiny King and Fat Kitty, they don't like each other. Well, uh, no, that's not true. Tiny Kitty loves Fat Kitty. Fat Kitty hates Tiny Kitty. Mm. Not, nobody likes Tiny Kitty. So who wins that battle? I mean, Tiny Kitty seems tiny. So how she likes to fight is she likes to get on her back and like take the low ground when she fights. Their fights never really go anywhere. There's a lot of hissing in general, but there's not really any, nothing really happens. But maybe we need to see Fat Kitty. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's so happy. Oh, Jenna's like, I will take Tiny Kitty. Wow. He is not having it at all. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Has he ever like taken a, a swipe at your face? Oh, Jenna said he... she'll take Tiny Kitty. Yeah, I saw that. Tiny Kitty is a good kitty. She's a nice kitty, but she is not a snuggler. She she wants you to pet her, but she'll just she kind of demands it, and then you'll you know she comes over to have her head scratched, but then she doesn't want to like cuddle with you or hang out. Like Fat Kitty is a total snuggler, <laughs> and Big Kitty he likes to spoon too. Like he likes to cuddle. Oh, you can't have Fat Kitty, and that come on. Yeah, well, I knew that she was. She likes. I reserve Fat Kitty this. for whenever Kelly doesn't want Fat Kitty anymore. I always want Fat Kitty. Do you hear that? He's growling. He's growling at Tiny Kitty. He does not like Tiny wow. Kitty. Wow. Dang. <laughs> My Fat Kitty named Phoebe is more chill she just just she's goes a very elderly she's a very elderly kitty i mean fat kitty yeah. is pretty chill too he just hates tiny kitty so but there's hope because at first big kitty and fat kitty hated each other but now they're cordial co-workers they'll even kind of snuggle a little bit like you know it takes cats years dogs like, long, yeah. become friends in a day Cats. Yeah. Whereas we had litter mates and they became enemies towards the end of their uh, of Scout's <laughs> life. They did not like each other. Or at least Scout was the one that hissed every time Phoebe walked by. <sighs> Cats, man. It's very Rico, good. what's up? So you can't chat. Hey, Rico. Hello. Hello, all. And uh, before the stream class. started, I saw that uh, Mark gifted five memberships mark thank you mark foot, mark we're very concerned how are you doing oh we yeah i saw that picture him. yesterday yeah that with didn't... like the streaks that go up so that's mm -hmm. a septicemia that's a blood infection <laughs> not good but he's he's going to the doctor he's taking medicine he's done the right thing so i hope it gets better yeah. yeah i hope you get better mark but, uh, yeah, welcome to membership. SC Catahoula, Scuba Stevo, Nano Aquarium Guy, Nathan Hovey, and Whips World. Good to see more more green names. Yep. And um, it should be warming up in some places soon ish. Um, yep. I'm going to be checking some, uh, going to be checking weather probably this weekend and seeing what, I, what I can send out next week. Um, oh, just good. to get those going for the winter version of the plant form nice and mark says he's doing a lot better so that's good that's good news that's good to hear, mark. Glad to hear that because i i actually have a friend who hopefully will be released from the hospital today who had portions of his feet amputated portions yeah. like, they gave some like, of his feet from the toes yeah he's type 1 diabetic and uh it's hard to heal when you have mm -hmm. type 1 diabetes and he's just been dealing with wounds that won't heal so yeah not good so i really would like my friends to keep their feet you know if possible yeah wouldn't mind yeah. keeping them 
Yeah, I would yeah. really like to keep your feet. You need them. So good news there. <laughs> so yeah, and Brooklyn, how is Brooklyn doing? I haven't heard how I I heard about the kitchen fire. How's your kitchen? How it? How many? What happened? What fish did you lose? I mean, I guess Stephen can also fill us in, but. I guess. I mean, let me know, Brooklyn, if you want me to fill everyone in or if you, I mean, I'll let it be your story to tell if you prefer. Um, yeah. Or get back to it. Just, just letting you know, I'm, you know, we're thinking about you and mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Now, safety wise, everybody's okay. The kitchen sure. fire was confined yeah. to the stove. I mean, there's okay. soot on the cabinets and walls around it, of course. Right. And... A mess to clean up. But... Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, as far as I could tell, that was um, the bulk of it. Like it didn't, yeah. it didn't spread. Nobody got hurt. That's good. I'm glad your house didn't burn down. Yeah. 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 But still losing, mm. losing fish is hard. Okay. So she says she doesn't mind Stephen. So. Okay. Well, as you know, as part of all of that, um, the fire chaos, Thor, of course, was freaking out and he was running under the tank stands and stuff and as like also brushed against and knocked the uh the co2 cylinder and regulator and um so it was just a big co2 bomb in the 40 gallon mm. and unfortunately that's um that is where her most of her angelfish are oh no her angels God, including angle Unfortunately, oh, Angle no. was among the casualties. Oh, no. Angle was the best fish. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Brooklyn. So there were, um, there were five angels in there. Two of them, two of them survived. Um, they're pretty I, angels. They are pretty. Uh, the, so she had like, I don't know, five or so of mono shrimp. A couple of those survived. Okay. Um, she had about half a dozen rummy nose. One rummy nose survived, which I mean surprises me that it, a yeah, small no, no. fish like that would would even make I'm it. Surprised but, any of them made it. They're such yeah. a good fish. Um, um, her she has one panagara. The panagara um, miraculously was like we didn't even take the panagara out of the tank and put it in a bucket. Like panagara was just swimming around like nothing happened. Um, They're so, a really hardy fish. Yeah. And um, she had, um, I don't know how many auto sinkless, but she lost two or two or three auto sinkless. Yeah, almost all of the autos made it. Okay, that's yeah. good. Um, that's good. I'm trying to think yeah. what else was in. Oh, she had Siamese algae eaters. She had three of those, and uh, all three of those are gone. Oh, I'm so sorry, Brooklyn. That really hurts. Oh yeah. I, and I've been there, you know, yeah. and her, I didn't have a, I didn't have a special fish that I, you know, cherished like, like she does angle yeah. in my 90. So I know, I mean, that's got a, it's just, it hits he was hard. a very special fish. Yeah. I met mm -hmm. angle. He was a good fish. That yeah. hurts. I, um, I mean, I lost two whole tanks of fish when I had mine. That's because I had a cheap regulator that failed. Which is why I always caution people, you know, accidents are still going to happen in your life. But if right. you're inviting trouble with a cheap regulator, if you have a regulator that is not, if you can't get it steady right away, it means it's not a good regulator. Yeah. In and this case, inviting trouble. this happened the same, the same way mine happened. It had nothing to do yeah. with the, it's with the uh, quality of the regulator. It was just right. like a freak. Yeah. 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 And that's, I mean, I guess the only thing you could do to prevent that would be to have a structure around it or have it, yep. you know, in a stand, which, you know, is, you know, not always available in your current layout. I have two of mine in stands, but one of them, you know, some cat could, could bump it, but like where my beloved rainbows are, like that one is in a stand. So that's mm -hmm. protected. So it is something to think about, but, uh, you know, I'm really sorry, Brooklyn. It really hurts, and it's not your fault. And thank you very much, Eric, for the uh, twenty dollars super chat. All thank right. you, Eric. Cool. Yes, thank you, Eric. And I'm I'm very glad you're feeling better too, because you were really mm -hmm. sick. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So that's not good news, but yeah, yeah. 
things happen though. You know what? Whether you CO2 or not, Jimmy, bet you killed the fish before. Bet your negligence has killed the fish too. So it happens. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't matter how it happens. It always, it always sucks. It's always, you know, yep. we're all doing the best we can to keep our livestock. And uh, yeah, we're all doing the best we can. Yeah, fish, fish die. They, they don't, they don't live infinitely. Well, no, and as they age, they're more prone to getting things that'll get, kill them. Wow. Yeah. And just last night on uh, Danikin's stream, Danny was talking about how she lost a beta because it swam up into her uh, siphon tube really fast. She got it out as quickly as she could, but mm -hmm. it probably got it, its back. Enough, or yeah. Something, you know, it that's happened. exactly how I lost a beta uh, a couple of years ago. And I lost a rainbow that way too. Like a very. I lost a couple of quarries that way. And uh, then. Yeah, uh, a very juvenile rainbow I sucked up. Oof. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it happens. So Eric says his sinuses and lungs are better, but his throat is killing him. So it sounds like you're getting something else. Oh, God, Eric. Yeah. God, you cannot catch a break. These children yeah, yeah. are trying to kill you. I'm so yeah, sorry. It all started with him pooping in the toilet. So that's that's a cause. Children pooping in toilet leads to Eric being sick. Oh, yes. Just tell your children to stop pooping. Have them poop in the yard. That's what dog does. <laughs> Shouldn't have listened to their bodies. <laughs> I know. Ignore your body. Just yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I've had uh, many guppies survive the siphon tube adventure. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's uh. Guppies well, if they're small enough, yeah, they'll they'll fit through the tube. But really yeah. slow, like an adult rainbow is gonna swim out of the way. Yeah. But mm -hmm. guppy is kind of slow and cumbersome, so yeah, mm -hmm. I can see them getting sucked right. up. But yeah. <sighs> Well, so Jenna's got the upper respiratory crud going on right uh, now. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that sucks. That I mean, I was yeah. picking January, but I am going to do my damnedest to stay healthy because in two weeks I am leaving the country. Mm -hmm. So Costa Rica. Yep. Jake right now is in Germany for work. I thought about going with him, but I decided not to. And talking to him, I do believe I made the right decision. I'll go with him next time he goes to Germany. But um, yeah, so in two weeks, I'm going to Costa Rica. I'm pretty excited about that. I've been there before and it's pretty great. This time last year, right? Uh, no, I went right before COVID happened. I went to Costa Rica. Oh, was that long right ago? Okay. Yeah, last year I went to the Bahamas in January. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, I remember you went to some uh, sort of freaking paradise. Yeah, yeah, no, last time I went to Costa Rica, um, mm. I don't know where I picked it up, maybe even in the airport, like eating some crappy salad or something. I got cryptosporidium, which is like an amoeba parasite yeah. disease. Huh. I was hospitalized for like a I remember week. you saying that, yeah. Yeah, I lost 11 pounds in two weeks. It was dark times. Was... <sighs> Yikes. I don't want to do that again. That was rough. <laughs> No, it doesn't sound like a good. No, thing. it's the worst it's way to lose right weight. On. It's the worst. <laughs> but it's fast. <laughs> it <was really> fast. <laughs> but my doctor. If you need that look beach look body within like know. a week. <laughs> no, my doctor took one look at me and she's like, "You are a dried out prune." <laughs> did not look good. So yeah. Oh, so and we were being, we're being very inconsiderate to Geek Boy. Oh, we really just oh, try to sorry. frame around my one on one meetings each week. I find it very rude. You guys start without me every week. It is well, rude. send us your schedule, Geek. We'll see if we can accommodate. We'll see what we your can do. I mean, you know, I I miss afternoon delight a lot when Rico yeah. has it because I have some goddamn meeting then. Yeah, I always, I classes, almost yeah. always have something going on in the middle of the afternoon. It's really prime meeting time. Mm -hmm. I just have so many meetings. Uh, what lately work is all about? Drugs. Needing to push all the due dates back and just talking about how we're pushing the due date meeting, due dates back. And I'm like, but if you didn't have so many meetings about pushing the due dates back, we could the due dates wouldn't be pushed back. We could get this <laughs> done. And the thing is, is like all my data expires in six months. So if they can't get it turned around, like I have to redo all of the stuff where I'm like, oh. I'm staring down 
redoing a whole bunch of literature reviews, which whatever, I'm paid either way. I don't care, but that's why they want to use my time. Yeah. In other news, Matt has become a full-blown uh, app, mobile app developer, and he's enjoying it. Oh, really, Matt? I'm so excited. I want the But iOS also don't want to be in your shoes at this at this time. Yeah. I yeah. want the iOS app so bad because I'm I'm an Apple girl. I'm I'm an Apple girl. Just, you know, just uh, keep up the good fight, Matt. I'm proud of you. You can do it. I believe in you. Get me that app. Fat Kitty and I are, we're iOS users. So for those of the people who don't have any context about what Scotty is saying, that can be read a different way. What he's talking about is a CO2 regulator. It is not attached on there. Yeah. So Scotty, my advice for you is to not put anything you care about in that tank. If you want to just mess around and learn how to use CO2 and play with growing plants. All right. But don't, don't put any livestock in there. <laughs> For the time being, at least until everything settles in and like you notice yeah. in a couple of months that it's staying nice and steady. Yeah, I, even then, uh, uh, I don't know. I would be real wary of it. I would be real wary of it. But, you know, if you've got no livestock in there, whatever. <sighs> I like Geek Boy says Matt is an Apple girl too. That's. <laughs> yeah. I said he took two days off after four days straight of banging his head. Oh, yep. That's frustrating. But I believe in you, Matt. I believe in you. I believe in you. You can do it. No pressure, but do it. <laughs> Bex and I really need it. <laughs> yeah. I think Bex and I, I do I too. Yeah. The only people in the fish family. No, uh, I need it. Oh, Myrtle needs it. There mm -hmm. you go. Myrtle it's just hasn't right. been complaining about it. I She's haven't really complained. Patiently, about quietly. It. Wait. Yeah, I know. I don't know about it i mean i've complained a couple of times but that's because i keep forgetting that matt's not responsible for it <laughs> and then yeah <laughs> i mean i i don't want to do it so yeah i don't know how to do it yeah so i wouldn't know where to start either he said something about oh what did she say back up there recently one of my short fin bettas put himself in a piece of toil wood and was stuck luckily i was working on tanks inside i had to break the wood to get him out no more choil no more choil wood for my that's really hard to say <laughs> or toil wood no for my better tanks yikes that's scary you yeah. know what i don't like choya wood anyways because it breaks down and then it's an algae magnet so I don't think you're missing out on anything. I am anti toya wood. So I'm sorry about that, though. Yeah, betas like to squeeze themselves mm -hmm. in wherever they can and just they die. Do. Yeah, they, they just do. like to be secluded. That's like they like mm. they like cramped tanks more than like very open. They want foliage. They do. They do. Mm -hmm. I have. A, I'm not. A, I've only had one betta ever. I'm not really a betta expert. So. So speaking, of, speaking of foliage, we do have a topic today. We have a topic. We're topic people. We come prepared. <laughs> I mean, we can talk about it briefly. It's just mm -hmm. about having variety in your tank, right? Variety yeah. Yeah. Yep. Especially at the beginning of a new tank. I think it's yep. super important. Variety and quantity. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. Tank. Quantity. Whenever. So on, I'm a moderator for Rainbow Fish Live. And there was someone posting because he's having algae problems and i'm like well we need information you know you can't just say i have algae what do i do like yeah. we need to know about your tank we need to know about the lights you know we need to know your maintenance routine we need to know your fertilizers you know we need to know your substrate we need to know more we need a picture and like i don't even need a picture because i know what that tank's gonna look like he's got mm -hmm. like four plants in there you know he's got like four crypts and that's it i'm like which is definitely there's in the problem. beginning stages or depending on how much fish you have it's almost very likely to have algae in there so. yeah planting heavily from the start is mm -hmm. universally agreed upon i think by people who grow plants and aquascapers is a yep. secret for success and i've even seen george farmer like if he has kind of a more bare aquascape that's like a lot of foregrounds or slow growers, he'll just put a plant uh, or a pot of Limnophila sessiflora, mm -hmm. which also known as what is it, like Ambularia or something. Uh, the, the larger version is Ambulia, yes. Ambulia, I think the smaller yeah. one is, yeah. It's a fast grower. Yeah. It's a very weed. fast, yeah. 
it's a it's like not something I would want long term in a tank because it just oh, it's too much, it's too fast. But it's yeah. good. I mean, it's for not so bad. It's you know it. It's not as bad as uh, polysperma, like how fast that yeah. grows. That's the fastest grower, yeah. That would be a good nitrate sponge, too. Just unless, you, unless you have a friend, you're not going to be able to buy that one commercially because it's banned. Yeah. So many places. Mm -hmm. It's banned for a reason. Yeah. Because like, if you were to take some of that and throw that out in the ditch, Stephen, like, that ditch would get choked within a week. But it'd be yeah, so it'll great. take over whatever's growing. <laughs> it would, but it would, you know, yeah. it's not native. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, so if you yeah. have some of this, if I've sent it to you, um, just, you know, don't. Don't be a dick. Compost yeah. it, That pink plant with tank. white veins, don't uh, dispose of it irresponsibly. You know, I wouldn't put it outside in a tub to grow it either. Because, like, yeah. what if some of the birds can come in? Or something? Yeah. yeah. Like, I would just be treat that with some caution because that one is a real ecosystem killer. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah, fast growers are really going to help your process. I mean, I always like to have at least, because I'm not a person who really likes stem plants, but I always put one fast grower in a tank, whether I keep it or not, oftentimes I don't. So, for instance, in this big tank here, I had Hygrophila corambosa cherry leaf. I got rid of that after probably two months because it's insane. <laughs> You know, it's and just like its much. root structure is also pretty strong. Like if you try to pull on that yeah. thick stem, yeah. either the stem will snap, even though it's a thick stem, or you'll have to like lift up all the substrate when you're pulling uh, and reading the plant. It, it's like growing mm -hmm. a tree. It's like yeah. growing it, a tree. Yeah. In your, all I mean, the yeah. corimbosa varieties of cryophila yeah. just get thick stems like that. Yeah, I mean the 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 hygrophila compact, the cornbosa compact. That one is a very slow grower. I've yeah. had. That's I would not count on that one. That's it's my favorite nice, hygro. Mm -hmm. It's a nice plant, but it's not something you would use to balance out a tank. It's not no. going to help that. But uh, but like yeah, some so, of the basic Ludwigias are really fast. Yep, Rotalas, the the uh, Limnophila yeah. sessiliflora, mm -hmm. um, Bacopa, and that kind of stuff. You want it like. If you're starting a planted tank, a lot of like everything brand new, some of them are going to take longer than others to sort of like convert and get going to grow and absorbing nutrients. Yeah. So that's why I think variety is also important. Cause if you're like, if you shove a bunch of Anubias and Java fern and stuff in a tank, you're just going to get algae. Yeah. And if you want to make me really unhappy, like do an entirely boost land. <laughs> like, we were just talking about before we started this stream. It's such an algae magnet. It's yeah. like the biggest algae magnet of any mm -hmm. plant. Yep. Like if you want to be really miserable, so <laughs> do that. But, you know, if you feel like, you know, your algae is really out of control, take a look at what you have in your tank. If you don't have anything that you think grows fast, just add one, even if yeah. you don't think you'll keep it. You know, and I like a fast grower better than a floating plant. Floating plants mm -hmm. are the fastest growing. Yeah. Because floating plants are going to shade everything. So I actually never use floating plants inside. I use them in my pond a lot. I like the floating plants. Like, because I, like, I have a, um, my betta, even though I still have to deal with the algae in there, but my betta tank has mostly boosts Anubius and, um, one one or two crypts in there and then like i had the whole top shaded with uh water lettuce and now that i took some of that out like the hair algae is going nuts and i have to uh, probably do a pretty big overhaul to get most of that out and then really turn the light down to essentially yeah nothing. but it's you know it's tricky to get get uh balanced out and then the another thing that the fast growing plants can do is they can shade some plants that prefer mm -hmm. shade like anubias mm -hmm. really wants to be in a shaded part of your tank and you can either shade it with hardscape or with other plants and like if you keep your anubias out in the open unless your tank is really balanced and algae free like this tank right here i have anubias that's out in the open but there's no algae in there it's a very established tank you know it's pretty solid but if it were a new setup, it it would get covered in green spot algae because that's what Anubias does. It's a magnet for that. Yeah. So, you know, 
creating that is really going to help. And it doesn't mind. It doesn't need the light. And giving mm -hmm. it more light doesn't necessarily make it grow faster. Giving it CO2 will help it grow faster. Yeah. But more light doesn't really seem to help it. So shading yeah. plants really helps too. So, yeah. I had Anubius and Boost surrounding a really tall, broadleaf sword. And it was doing really well because the sword was shading like all of it. But then I took that sword out, replaced it with a shorter one, but I didn't do anything to the lighting. And so you can guess what's going on with the boost right now. Algae, yep. Algae, Great. yeah. And Greg says he only uses floating plants, only in tanks he's really struggling with. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good policy because it, it can help really balance things out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you kind of have to keep on top of them or they're going to choke out all your light. And, mm -hmm. You know. But, you know, if you really need something. And outside, I try to keep 90% of the water covered by floating plants. And so until my water lilies start to really take off and, you know, the pads expand, I have floating plants in there and they really help. Yeah, this is just a big pile of neglect going on. In <laughs> but hey, look, this boost is flowering. Dun, dun, dun. The rest of it is, I don't know. <laughs> well, that, 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 that sword will get bigger so, soon, and then once it starts shading out, the yeah, algae will, the new out. leaves in the boost and Anubias will place. I have most of my boost in another tank um, yeah. just for that reason, because like I didn't want to ruin all of it. So Yeah, and I have some boost that is getting ruined right now because it's, it's right on rocks and it's just getting baked by light. And, you know, the aquascape doesn't really allow for shading it, unfortunately. So I might just take that boost out. I mean, you know. Maybe I know the elsewhere. mini boost is actually more tolerant to highlight than yeah. the broadleaf stuff. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, this is just some cheap wavy green boost. This is not like mm -hmm. your like super mystic brownie ghost, imperial green wavy black skeleton mystical i think i already said mystical but saying it twice i mean boost is super mystical name. it's the stupid that's so stupid yeah Number i mean you can you can call it, say one boost 18 different names just depending on who's selling I, it i think it was johnny was asking on the on the discord mm -hmm. like if that was its scientific name i'm like <laughs> if it was there's nothing it, less help <laughs> it is the least science it is just it's like naming drugs. I mean, it's like strains of weed, except that those have better lineage traced to them. because <laughs> They're grown by like genetic professionals and yeah. Bruce is grown by idiots who like to speculate in the market. Now, you know, my opinion of Bruce, I mean, <laughs> Bruce is like Bitcoin. It kind of is only you could probably make more money off of Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so Nathan says I started some floating some wisteria, so water wisteria, had about a soda can tops worth in a month, and I had about a basketball's worth. Now I have it in three tanks. Yep, that is a very fast grower, and that's one you can mm -hmm. use to balance a tank out. That's kind mm -hmm. of a floating plant. Um, I would not keep that in a CO two tank long term oh, yeah. because God this tank behind me this tank was a hundred percent wisteria once and it had co2 running in it and it was just yeah there was about two and a half three feet uh. of wisteria growing immersed as well like it was it, it just went up i might have an old picture of it. it'll take me a couple of hours to find so i might post it on the discord it was just the trying tank, to yeah. take over your dorm room like oh that was at uh, this was at home yeah this was before oh, i was in no. college yeah okay this yeah. was when this was not my display tank and my display tanks were all in the garage yeah. at this at that time it was just a holding tank for some fish. Yeah, but I feel like um, too, there's a place through the them. same thing uh, where she had CO2 injected tank with a bunch of wisteria, and mm -hmm. it was just like unmanageable, just yeah. ridiculous. And the the stalk, the the stems weren't stems anymore; they were stalks. They were thicker than like asparagus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and there's a place for plants that grow that fast. But it is not long term in a CO2 tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, right. just, it's just not. So, you know, but but it really can help you balance out a tank. I mean, I've seen it happen for me. Like, you know, because I, I don't really like I don't really like stem plants. But, you know, if I'm ever struggling with 
with an aquascape adding one of those fast growers it really can help balance it out and it's just a i mean part of it is because it's kind of sucking up extra nutrients but i think part of it is just because it kind of shifts the balance of algae in the tank i mean there's a lot of alchemy that goes on with with getting a tank balanced and honestly so many people, you know, they'll say like, oh, it's because I did this, 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 and now my tank is algae free. But I often wonder if it's, it's that's probably not going to be the biggest contributing factor to your algae I mean, being just gone. The time. I mean, I didn't change a damn thing and this tank just balanced out. It just did. Yeah. A lot of times it's just waiting. It's just um, waiting. Like Jenna's tank right now. Um, she's got lots of uh, the brown algae gone yeah. everywhere it's been like that for months we clean it off but i know in time it'll just like it's gonna be all right so I'm it, not yeah it's just you just keep up on the maintenance just keep up on basic husbandry of your plants fertilizing and mm -hmm. it, it does get there it just it can take time the bigger the tank is i think the easier they are to get them balanced like mm -hmm. this one broken right away so what if you have a huge tank like money viper uh unfortunately I, she says i need to leave a lot of room uh, so she can't have a lot of plants but she says i plan on some val and some java fern types how can i avoid an algae outbreak but provide enough light to establish so can you use shorter plants can you still mm -hmm. have like some foreground because like i've got this foreground going right now and this will grow without co2 marsalea and i love it and you know I, you can carpet the whole thing with it it takes time mm -hmm. but you know it's uh is there a reason why you need to leave room yeah what's now, if your fish need uh, the water column to be clear you can do a carpet of star grass in the front star grass is a very fast growing carpeting plant sure, yeah. it sucks up a lot of nitrates and uh stuff so it's probably going to help uh, battle your algae and it yeah. looks nice in front in front of Valisneria and Java Farm. Like it'll be a nice yeah. uh, plant to have in the front. Yeah. What is uh what is the scientific name of Stargrass? Do you know? Heteranthera zoisterfolia or something like that? Yeah. Zoisterfolia. Uh, mm -hmm. I have two stems of it because I got sick and tired of how fast it grew in my main <laughs> tank. So I just put it into my no CO2 five gallon. And it stayed I dormant for a couple months. So I'm happy at how slow it's growing okay. in there. So she geophagus. says, ah, sand for the yeah, geophagus. Okay. Carpeting place, sand for geo. So hmm. if she, if it's one of those one eighties with like the, uh, bars in the rim, she can do two sections of it with, uh, what you might call it? Hyacinth. It'll eat up all her nutrients. And then oh, she can yeah. have Valisneri in the center and then Java ferns where the hyacinth is shading it. So the ferns won't get algae on the leaves and the hyacinth eating up the nutrients. And the center is going to be very uh, lighted up, so you can have all the valisneri in that part of the tank. I think yep. Corey has a good point. A tank that large, you could use smaller, powerful yeah. ones that only cover your planted area and will have minimal spread. That's a good idea. And then leave it open, sandy area for your geos. Mm -hmm. and that could work. But, I mean, you want things that have good root systems because yeah. the geos will not stay to that area. They will go where they want to go and mm -hmm. they will dig around and you don't want like delicate stem plants. They're going to dig up. Yeah. But vowels, that's a good choice. Yeah. But even with vowels, you still want them to develop their root structure before you put the geos in because like yeah. freshly planted vowels are really easy to get uprooted. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And vowels, I think are a pretty fast grower. Yeah. Yeah, once, once they, they once they get going, they'll you'll see runners all across the tank. Yeah, and that's why um even in a non CO2 tank, I can't deal with valves. It's too much. I mean, they're pretty, but it's too damn much. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. They don't really you don't really get to, to decide where they go. Like yeah. you would think you that can they try would blocking them off with rocks or pieces of plastic, but nope. Yeah, but it's more like they'll go they'll under start in the corner and then it's just I'm gonna go there now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a two foot runner. Like, why? Why are you doing that? It's just the way they propagate in the wild. They, they want to be as far away from the mother plant as possible so they can make a bigger colony wherever they fall off. I Which mean, is why if stem you, plants if break you, in the if wild. If you want a tank that is 100% vowels, then 
you have nothing to do, just put some value yeah, in the tank. And some, people do it for you. some people want that look. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a good, uh, it's a nice look. Yeah. Yeah. So Bunny says it will be blocked off and roots will be established. So it won't stay blocked off. It'll go, <laughs> yeah. it'll go all over the tank. It will find but establishing away. the roots first is a good idea. Yeah. But I don't think your geophagus will be unhappy. Like, you know, we'll be fine. I'm not a geophagus expert, but I've seen people keep them in plants and tanks. I think it'll be okay. So yep. coral work suggests potted plants. I do not suggest potted plants. I think that they're never the best option. They're, the you're limiting not, them unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Like, right. They'll grow, but not in any like meaningful, good looking way. Like they, they, they'll have limitations. We've seen people yeah, try to and do they it, but the work much is... towards fighting their algae. Yeah, that's because they're going to be sensitive. Do. They're they're not going to be growing fast enough because they're restricted to that small square footage, and they don't have enough root space for the roots to spread out. So yeah, that's right. exactly what I was going to say. So like, you're just making your life harder. I mean, I would probably just have more algae because of the stuff that's dying within the pot. Yeah. We we'll just plant your tank as per normal, and your geos will probably be quite happy. Oh, mm -hmm. so you're saying like not potted plants, but like putting a barrier in the tank to segment your planted areas. I'd um, say the valve are not going to that. Yeah, the valve the valve is going to come out of like you, if you ever seen valve propagate, mm -hmm. it'll just come out of the substrate, and you'll just see dangling roots in the water column. Like it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's not. Now, but if you want to do, if you want to keep the work, put the work into this ivy, what you can do is just plant the back of your tank with val and then put river rocks about like six or seven inches deep at like a six or seven inch depth of river rocks whatever val does make it through you can just snip it off and put it back in the back so the bag gets thicker and thicker and thicker you're keeping mm -hmm. the open the front open it'll be a little work to keep it segmented like that but it, uh, it's a good even idea even then like she'll be the val snipping stuff find, every week it will yeah. find a way it will mm -hmm. find a way I would I would be willing to bet you that eventually that tank will be covered in Val. It's yeah. astounding. For instance, I have not had red tiger lotus in this plant. I pulled that plant like four months ago, and I am fine. The original plant was in the middle of the tank. I'm finding runners still popping up like two mm -hmm. feet away. Yep, one of the few nymphaeas that like send out runners like that, and then just. <laughs> You'll find more. Uh oh. I look, look. When you stream, with defend me, yourself, Stephen. No, I'm not defending myself. I have standards. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she is, she is graciously helping me with the design for 2023. What the fish shirt? Wow. Oh, that's nice. I'm hard at work on that, and it will be done this month. That's so. a lot of work. Thank you, Bex. That's very nice of you. That is a Thank lot of work. Thank you indeed. And um, yeah, your eyes are probably feeling real strained. <laughs> oh yeah. Steven was trying to work on that when I was there, and he was going like, <laughs> it "Was not yeah. good." Just like because you got 250 plus fish on a on a page. It's oh. yeah. She's working on. Well, we were we've been brainstorming like the layout the background, like all that kind of stuff. Because otherwise my brain is like, let's take all the fish and put them there in a big pile. <laughs> I like things. I like lots of things everywhere. It's it's good to have Bex regulate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need someone That's to bring me. She has the artistic eye. Bring That's me to good, reality. Yeah. Yeah. So Bunny Viper says we're crushing her tank dreams. You know, here's oh. the thing. Your tank will end up how it ends up, and it will it will be different than you planned, but it will still be wonderful. It will be mm -hmm. wonderful in a way you didn't imagine. Yeah, because it's, it's not what it, you, it's not what you imagine in your eye that you want to see. You want to see the progress of that tank becoming. So it'll it'll make itself a story. You, you can you'll have that story of fighting to keep the plants yeah. safe from the geos and everything. That story will make you have a. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the thing is, is your geos are going to be happy. Mm -hmm. So, Oinky, in them. the member milestone chats that StreamYard still has yet to incorporate in the StreamYard chat, 
Um, I mean, no, no, I'm not complaining or anything, StreamYard. It's just that I'm paying you thirty dollars a month or some mm -hmm. ridiculous shit like that, and maybe it's a you lot wanna... of money. I haven't, I haven't, yeah. paid, I'm not paying for it. I don't see what it will get me. So, I get to remove the StreamYard logo. And oh, that duck in the corner. Thirty bucks for me. Is and that have all? up to ten people on panel, which will never, ever, ever happen. Yeah. At least not That's on the stream. Too many. That's yeah. too many. And I don't have anyone up other than me. So. So, and me when I have to go fix your shit. Oh, thank God for you. <laughs> no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> so, Oinky, I would like know to know. You ever, like, actually, come on. You just in the background. Yeah. Well, I think I had to come up there for a sound issue or something, but yeah, I'm not actually coming up there to, to like say science things. I mean, you could. I could pretend like I know what I'm talking about and just, you know, just say come, wrong stuff. Just, just come in with a lab coat and like have beakers in as your background. And then, yeah. No, yeah. real yeah. scientists don't really wear lab coats. If you work in yeah. the medical sciences, you wear one, but like I never wore web lab coat unless it was cold in the lab, but labs are never cold. Or unless you are on an infomercial pushing a supplement, then you wear a lab mm -hmm. coat. I'm not pushing any supplements, though As I should. I, I should, I guess. So yeah. fast growing plant to live with chomping cyclids is uh, polysperma sunset. There you go. I've seen it happen with it's a whole too much to of chomp. Mambuna. <laughs> there, mm -hmm. It looked really beautiful with the mm -hmm. Mambuna cichlids. I am not a cichlid expert, but I have seen it done. Didn't use CO2. Looked great. Grows super fast. So that's a choice. Otherwise, I mean, it kind of depends on your cichlid. I mean, George Farmer he had um a planted cichlid tank for quite a while with those like the the labs right the libidochromus mm -hmm. i think and he eventually gave up and just did a rock aquascape for them because he got tired of them bashing it as plants and it was all like anubias and java ferns so it depends on the personality of your fish but mm -hmm. you could try that sunset hygrophila polysperma now i know um, june only we, oscars um, you know, she has Oscars, which are notorious, like <laughs> asshole plant killers. Wow. And she's doing well with, um, with vowels at the very least, the giant vowel that I've yeah. seen is doing well. Mm -hmm. Cause once that gets rooted and established, like good luck trying to rip that up. Same with like swords or anything that heavily roots. Just the, the trick is you gotta, it has to be get the root structure before you add the cichlids. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know. Or you find a way to protect the roots while, if the cichlids are already in the tank, right. while it's being established. I mean, I think it is really true with cichlids are very intelligent fish, much more intelligent than, let's say, a rainbow. Mm -hmm. They have very different personalities. And maybe another Oscar would chew up all those vowels, but that Oscar likes it. So we can't tell you what will work because we don't know. This is one case where I would say don't plant heavily. Don't spend all of your money. Just mm -hmm. get a couple things. Find cheap, easy to grow plants. See that... how it goes with a couple things before you invest a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Because if your cichlids like salad, they're just going to eat salad. You can't tell them to not eat salad. So I mean, you could tell them. I mean, you can, but will they listen? Probably not. No. no. So Cora Works wears, you wear a, a lab coat at your job. Yeah, but if you're working like in a lab, like a research lab, you're doing basically no one wears one. No, no that's uncool. You don't need one for warmth ever because labs are always like at least 73 degrees. So you use those rock planters. The so they're the, ones, like the, the easy planters. Those are very attractive. Mm -hmm. I got one. Move them around. They are very strong fish. They're very strong. Yeah. They move around the rocks. That's funny. <laughs> I bet that's fun to watch. It's like yeah, they're playing soccer with the uh, easy planters. Yeah. Just put two Watching. goals in the end, see how many are inside of the tank. And I don't know. I baby my plants. I don't want to watch my fish be assholes to my plants all day. <laughs> like, stop, stop. Don't bite it. But cichlids are very smart. They're mm -hmm. very smart. And inquisitive. Yep. So why, why, why? I don't know. You're True. welcome. Hi. New Thank face. Thank you for... Thank you for coming to our stream. Um, so 
I enjoy your videos. Thank you. And was wondering if you're ever going to do a follow up on the Tiger Inler and Mosh Pit tank. So I've done, I did one follow up. It's been a while though. I should probably do another follow up. Not a whole lot has changed. Um, there's more blue guppies in there. Now the Tiger Inler tank, the follow up on that one is going to be hooray. I got rid of the Tiger Inlers. <laughs> I um, like, I kind of want to move on to something else. So I'm going to probably start selling those a lot more aggressively and, um, and like grow out the fry, maybe separate them so they don't breed anymore. But yeah, I I'm thinking of uh, some other project, probably Corey's like I'm obsessed with Corey breeding right now. You are. So. It's true. I mean, I have to say though, that a lot of your like creative energies and time are going to editing videos for Dan's fish. Mm -hmm. So if you checked out their most recent uh, day in the life of a fish keeper video, Steven edited that and it looks really good. And maybe Ahmad would drop the link for that because it's a really good video. Not Myrtle. Don't Myrtle do it. Myrtle won't. Don't do my, it, Myrtle. My hands are up here. My hands are up here. Oh. And I'm not going to do it because I wouldn't do it anyways. I'm a lady. <laughs> I modded in Crypt Keepers stream today. I put the link to join uh, fishfam.link Patreon, which you should do. Yes, you should, should join it. Because Matt is out there trying to get me an iPhone app. Nice. Mm -hmm. And I, we should all support him. Like, if you have an iPhone, you should really support him. If you don't have an iPhone, you should support him. Get rid of your no, Netflix. Geek has some good get news. Yep. Yes, get rid of Netflix, support Fish and Internet Link. That's right. He got some good news. He got the uh, Crystal Castleman book. <gasps> that is a book I need to get. Why do mm -hmm. I not own it? I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. know. You could have uh, could have entered the giveaway. I did. I didn't win. Well, then oh. I don't know. I don't know. I need to. I need, you need to, to enter more giveaways. I need to just bite the bullet and buy it. I don't know why I haven't bought it. That's awesome, though, Geek Boy. It's such a good book. So it's um, what's it called, Myrtle? Aquarium, uh, Aquarium plants. plants. Yeah. 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 By Crystal Castleman. It's a famous book. It's the comprehensive mm -hmm. plant. Yep. The newer plants. one is definitely it's uh, more detailed and has more plants. Yep. It's a new edition. Yeah, and she's devoted her life to uh, collecting. I mean, since she was a child, collecting and growing aquarium plants. She's Damn. a cool lady. I'm behind. Yeah. So Nathan has a comment that's especially for Jenna. He keeps oh. banana plants with his Imbuna cichlids. Perfect. <laughs> Jenna hates Let's start banana. an Imbuna yep. tank full. There's a banana, banana plant. plant right there that I planted just because Jenna hates them. I ah! brought them <laughs> the How's it doing? I'm gonna put a smack dab in my tank just because Jenna hates it. <laughs> I don't mind banana plants. I, would they be a good choice for cichlids though? I don't know. So is it the structure of the banana plant is it kind of like does it like throw out lily pad type leaves yeah, they're and in then like the right there's a rhizome that like you don't mm -hmm. bury the banana part right that's like the rhizome of the plant i mean you can anchor it into the substrate just like a tiny bit but like yeah okay. yeah and so, really depending on where you have it in your tank or what tank you have it and the bananas might fall off and it'll rely just on roots um yeah Wait, so the, you, it loses really. the banana part and it just, sometimes it depends on what uh, if, if you're if it's very nutrient rich in your tank yeah. it doesn't need a need for the banana they'll just drop them so like yeah, the same like the tuber in a uh, in a lily same thing mm -hmm. like you well, they are a lily they're a water yeah. lily oh, okay mm -hmm. are. So, and they're a storage organ they're for they're filled with like starches so i think they're kind of cool um hard to aquascape with Oh, yeah, definitely. They're really hard to control. I mean, once also, you have like, them somewhere. you know, pretty hard to deal with, like, Jenna barfing every time she walks by a tank. <laughs> so, not a great choice for Steven. Just have an <laughs> Imbuna tank full of banana plants and pogo octopus. Um, all right. That's interesting. I so, mean, if it's working, it's working. I, uh, you know, they all have their own personalities, cichlids do. Mm -hmm. I am not a cichlid expert. Yeah, and the idea of, of an Imbuna tank stresses me out because of the stocking level you have to do. So it's like it's a lot of cleaning and also you have Making to Making sure everyone gets along with each other. Yeah. yeah, and also like for you, your water is not really ideal for it because you would have to really GH boost. Same thing I have to do for the guppies, yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not super ideal. I mean, when I lived in Iowa, like it was perfect. Rift Lake cichlid water Mm -hmm. with that high KH and GH. But uh, for you, yeah, you'd have to boost your GH. So Jenna just throwing out all the fish that she doesn't like. She doesn't want it. She doesn't want it. She says no. She says no. She says, throw some hatchet fish in there too, I guess, and some balloon mollies. <laughs> you not like hatchet fish. A I don't know that. Yeah. I don't I understand why beautiful. she doesn't. I love hatchet a school fish. of hatchets is so cool, but you need a really good lid, like no gaps. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they're a. Uh... I get the balloon molly kind of point because I, I, yeah. I don't like them much either, but I hatchet fish, they're, they're beautiful. They're, yeah, they're a uh, school. Especially the marbled school. ones. They yeah. school really well. I'm pro mm-hmm. hatchet fish. And the way they move, they just like move their fins like that. Yeah. Yeah, might, they're cool. I would love might come them. around on it because I used to not like noodle fish. I used to not like Kali loaches or snaky fish. And now you do. There. Yeah, now I love them. Yeah, I, I have I have noodle. Well, they're kind of noodly. My eels. Oh, oh yeah, how are those eels doing that you just got? Oh my god, they're so cool, Myrtle. I'll post some more pictures of them. They're very Please cute. Do. They they're a little more reclusive. I mean, I see one right now. There are four of them, but they are eating crow flakes and other flakes and prepared foods. That's cool. hopefully um, a year from yeah. now. You're not telling us that they're 12 inches long and swallowing <laughs> rainbow fish whole. They're supposed to get six <laughs> inches, so yeah. let's hope. Right now, they're probably half that, so they have some room to grow. They seem kind of like chill. They don't really are not like super active fish, but maybe that will change too. I don't know. So, so far, I really like them. They have cute faces. They have the mm-hmm. little little noses like that. So, Coro asked, "Do floaters reduce hatchet jumping?" Yes, but no, the only thing that stops a fish from jump, well, successfully jumping out of a tank would be a lid that does not have any holes in. Yeah, like, and, they're, and they're the jumpiest of jumpers. Mm-hmm. I mean, even more so. Their than- bodies are built so that they can jump easily and like, find new yeah. and yeah. they're And they're top swimmers, too. So the cool thing is, is like, you know, you can have some of those at the top and you can have something else at the middle and something else at the mm-hmm. bottom. I think they're just beautiful because I've seen a big school of hatchets before and I was like, wow. Yeah, and they all like cool. to swim in a parallel, like so if, wow. if they're they're all gonna be facing the same direction. Yeah. Nice. Like with a discus tank, mm, I look real nice. That you could do some rummy nose in with that, and then some mm-hmm. gories at the bottom. I look real good. Corys, I mean, that's just mandatory. Well, for yeah. sure. Stir by Cory generally. Discus are also. I, you fresh. always see stir by Cory with cor- discus, yeah. I love stir by Corys. I mm-hmm. think they are cute. I, I like them too. I want I some. Fish. Yeah. I might get some from the from the ferals uh, whenever it warms up and they can yeah. ship. I wish I had stir bys instead of these Equus. I think stir by Corys are better, but. I mean, I kind of don't need more than one kind of quarry. So. They're quite a bit cheaper than the Equus, too. Quite a bit yes. cheaper. Mm-hmm. Unless you get the very specific collection point strain. I think Dan has like a very specific one that is incredibly expensive. I think the Equus are still more expensive. Still more really expensive. But I thought they would be super like turquoise teal, but they're not. They are like steel gray. Like, yeah, he's got Corridor's Stir by Pantanal or Pantanal. Pantanal, Pantanal, which is a region of the Amazon basin. So, like a drainage area of it that is known for like exciting plants. Yep. Yeah, like Ludwigia Pantanellis comes from mm-hmm. there. $29.99 per quarry. Yeah. Okay, so it is more than Equus. I think the Equus were what, 20 bucks each? They were not cheap. <laughs> and I think I should have gotten a different core. The Venezuela are much better. Orange, yeah. Oh, Which are, yeah, they look much better in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And they're so much cheaper. So much cheaper. So I don't think so, Ivy. I think you can do plants with it. Um, just try it. Just you do can, it. It's no. worth a shot. I mean, if yeah, Valisneri is definitely going to be fine in that thing. I have seen lots of people keep geophagus with plants. Just do it. Yeah, just don't worry about just being super it. specific with how it's scaped. Like, let the valve do what it's going to do. 
let it do what it does. It'll look good. You'll be happy. And your geophagus will be happy. Yeah. And if you want more plant ideas, if if you have a way to guard the plant while the while it's developing roots, you can put in any species of nymphaeid. They have extensive root structures. So mm -hmm. yeah. they'll be fine with the geophagus. They won't really go after the leaves much. They'll just try to sift around. And yeah. it's good for the plant itself, maybe, because it's helping keep the uh, bulb area above because they're going to kick it around a little. I think your geophagus and plants are going to be fine. I've mm -hmm. seen people do those together before. That's a combination that can work. It's not like you told me like, oh, I have silver dollars. What do I do? I'm like, oh. So on, have a the, to think. on the topic of variety of plants, Kelly, have you ever witnessed any two types of plant species or are similar competing for each other? Like literally. Oh, allelopathy? Yeah, this, yeah, is that, like, that this is like this this is like someone who once went to like one science lecture one day and learned a word and decided that like it applied to everything they knew there i know of zero instances. i didn't learn the word at all well there you go so what a allelopathy is and there are documented cases of this is that one plant secretes a chemical that inhibits another one so if you look in the desert for instance, and you look at the distribution of the sagebrush, it's a very regular pattern. And that's because they are secreting chemicals to keep neighboring plants away. And that's because a desert environment is very restricted for water. Mm -hmm. So they're, so very, they're competing for resources. So they're trying to right. find as many ways as possible for them to succeed and without others succeeding as well. Now, our aquariums are not restricted for anything. Okay, they're restricted for CO2. But plants don't um, have a way wild, to inhibit yeah, CO2. Yeah, in while most yeah. of those are going to grow immersed, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. And allelopathy isn't going to help with that. And, and those compounds for allelopathy are water-soluble, yeah. which means that they would just wash away. So there have been lots of people who've tried to tell me that there's allelopathy happening in their tanks. And it's like, well, first of all, I've seen lots of people do those two things together. They're just not working for you, and I can't say why, but it's not allelopathy. It's not. And I've heard I, that about um, dwarf aquarium lily, and I've heard that about um, dwarf sag. It's just not. Yeah, the one common thing you hear is hornwort and dwarf sagittaria. Both of them can go together. But, I mean, I've done it. it. Yeah, and I I've done, noticed it's I've like done valisneria and dwarf sagittaria together, and they both intertwine into a mess is what they mm -hmm. do. And I mean, I can't tell you why it hasn't worked for you if they haven't worked, but I can tell you it's not allelopathy because I know of no documented case of it and it does not make sense. Another example of allelopathy, one that if you're from like the Midwest that you're probably familiar with are um, black walnuts. They yep. secrete juglones and that's um, they inhibit lots and lots of things around them but that makes sense because um a tree is competing for light because mm -hmm. their canopy is going to take up a lot of light and so, so if anything they, underneath the canopy needs to find a way to like grow right and, and for for that tree that small seedling to get bigger it needs to find a way to keep that area of the canopy open so it's restricted but Swamp habitats, which is, you know, where our plants come from, are the most productive environments on Earth for like per ton of carbon fixed. And the reason for that is because they have no restriction for water. They really have no restriction for nutrients because they're swamps. They have tons of nutrients. And, and there's no restriction on light, light either. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, because there's nothing open. shading a swamp. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing shading them and they grow out of the water. Mm -hmm. in the wild so they're not restricted for co2 either so there's really nothing holding them back so there really is no allelopathy in our aquariums i challenge you to find a real example of that if you think it's a thing i'm how would you prove it if you had two plants and one on one doing well like can't you just say have, oh it's because the other so one's what killing you'd it have to do is you would have to you'd have to go old tiny biochemist on it and what you do if you're mm -hmm. an old tiny biochemist is you take you grind up a plant and you fractionate it 
and you test the fractions on it and you would test it to see if it inhibits growth. And then if one fraction did it, you'd say, aha, it's something in that fraction. And then you would fractionate it further and then you would fractionate it further until you got down to what the one thing it was. And that's what an old timey biochemist would do. If you were a geneticist, you would try to knock out the gene of the offender Mm -hmm. And see if you could make something that didn't do allelopathy. So there's kind of two ways you could do it. And I have seen no examples of that. None. Well, that sounds like too much work. I don't want to do that. It is too much work. But, you know, it's a fun thing for people who to go on a live stream who think they are expert aquatic gardeners and they're expert scientists and say, oh, maybe there's some allelopathy going on when, like, the main reason is probably one plant just grows faster than the other and it's just over out competing the other plant it's not yeah. right and you could see that happening with vowels and sagittaria for instance because sagittaria vowels goes slower vowels and goes faster and yeah and they're going to shade it out so it's mm -hmm. it's some other explanation but you know it's kind of like a, a pet peeve of mine when people like start because it's just the most hand waving nest of hand waving like, it's a fancy word. It's, it's it, if I word. learned it, remembered yeah. it, and said it yeah. right, I'd sound smart. Yeah. So, anyways, how can I learn more about freshwater sponges? So little is known about them. Yeah, there's not much to there's yeah, not much to know. Like one, right? right now, the best thing would be just to have a tank sit and do, almost do nothing. And once you see a sponge growing, and they just baby the heck out of it. Mm -hmm. Bentley Pasco has had he has one. Uh, boss Bob, Bob the sponge, yep. yep. Which is pretty cool. Um, Didn't Bob uh, replicate or like have two uh, two Bobs now? There's one on, in a corner now as well? He has. He has propagated. And um, I certainly don't know much about Bob or, or any freshwater sponge. I think they're, they're pretty cool, though. The other cool mm -hmm. thing, Bex had uh, the freshwater. Um, the jellies. Jellyfish. Yeah. Those were fascinating. Yeah. Jellies. That was like the coolest thing. Super cool. Ever. I was like, I was trying to think of a way for that Bex would ship all of us water. Oh, no. in it. <laughs> like we could make our own tanks. I was like, I don't think they make that. ship. I don't think they well, last. Shipping unfortunately, they when, so when you don't know what the what the hell is going on, and you see, yeah, because you don't want to have that like f go into somewhere because you don't even know what they are in the beginning. Like, I know you don't want them like, to get into a waterway or something. And that was immediately so going cool, to though. kill it with fire mode. <laughs> I yeah. know, but it's just so cool, like the diversity that our tanks yeah. support, and like, where do they even come from? You know, that's yeah, the, that's that's a good question. That's the crazy Fish, thing. Like, where they come, uh, in yeah. on, come in on some plant or come in with some fish? I mean, who even knows? But it yeah. is so cool. And yeah. we I would assume they came in through some fish poop or something, like a fish maybe mm -hmm. ate a jelly and like baby jellies were still in there no. maybe on a plant i don't even know how they replicate so i don't know if they lay eggs or no, live theirs yeah and so little is known about those i mean we know a lot about well i wouldn't even say we know a lot about bigger marine we know jellies. tons more about saltwater jellies than we do right but even water. then i feel like there's still there's much, so much to know about saltwater know, jellies yeah. because there's so many yeah. of the deep sea ones mm -hmm. yeah so Geek Boy wanted them too, but only Oscar suggests trying a lava lamp. I mean, that's a good suggestion. Dude. Yeah. I mean, Not in your tank, folks, like separately. And don't put the contents of a lava lamp into your tank. Don't no. put it in your tank. Uh, is uh, is Austin going? Um, he was scheduled. Let's see. I'll check on that. Usually he schedules for five after, so we got a little. We have a minute. Minute. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would like to learn more about freshwater sponges too. Just mm -hmm. in conclusion, like if there's anybody out there who's an expert, you can come on my stream and talk about them. Like I there would like more. Yeah, that would be a good thing to learn about. Well, let's see. Why does it recommend my own live stream to me? I don't know. It's a pretty so, good live stream. It wants you to go you back and watch it? the whole thing. Yeah. So. Oh my god! I don't want to do that. I I can't watch myself after a stream. I can't go back and. I can't either. No, can't. I was like, why is my voice and my face so dumb? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's wrong with my face? Same here. <laughs> yep. Hey, why did I say that? Man. Why am I so dumb? Yep. <laughs> That and you, the way you hear your voice in your head, like you think Different. you sound like this, like really low, but then you hear yourself in a recording 
And you're all I way sound up much here. More, Sorry. Much more nasally. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm like, oh my God, my accent is just so like, am I from Minnesota? I mean, geez. It's, no, it's pretty Midwestern. Pretty, but it's like the upper Midwestern. Mm -hmm. It could if be so, around, much, so much worse though. If I'm around a bunch of Minnesotans, which my entire like group I'm working with right now, because a lot of medical writers from Minnesota, I start really like, oh my gosh, oh gosh, don't you know? I mean, it gets really <laughs> bad. It gets bad. <sighs> Would y'all watch a 20 to 30 minute video of setting up a new tank? I don't want to make it too long, but I don't want to skip out on adding a certain part of me doing this project. Well, if you make it, they will come. Yep. Mm -hmm. No. That is They're good for your documentation. Make the video, keep it on your channel. Mm -hmm. If no, if few people watch it, think or this way, at least you put out the video and it's for your documentation purposes. Like you That's can see right. how this tank has progressed. Part of yeah, part of it is you're making it for you for your records. I mean. Yeah, and yeah. so 20, 30 minutes. I mean, I would say, if I'm going to watch a 20, 30 minute video more than likely i'm going to be listening to it more than watching like mm -hmm. i imagine a lot of people are listening to this stream and not watching right. so if you do that i would i would do a voiceover of how you yeah. set up the tank and why you did such and such and yeah stuff like yeah that. i would recommend it being a lot of voiceover and then if you mm -hmm. like if there's something that you need to show viewers you can like let them know in a voiceover to like look at this and and yeah. talk about it um because a lot of people they want to have something on but they don't they don't necessarily have the full attention span or they might be busy. Mm -hmm. They want to like look at the screen. So if it's like, if it's a 20, 30 minute of, of music and, and text on the screen and time lapse of you setting stuff up, that would be a difficult sell versus mm -hmm. uh, voiceover. Yeah. And I would really recommend making an outline of what you want to say. And so you can tighten it to the important things and you should always have three at most important points of what you want people to take as in their message from it. And if you don't have a message for them to take from it, don't make it. It's not worth it. Yeah. No, you or should you can, you'll find a message or, in it. Yeah. You'll find, find a message yeah. for the video. Yeah. But maybe your important thing is like, I learned this from this kind of filter or like, I wish I'd done this differently or this mm -hmm. is something I did that I'm I'm really proud of that worked well. So you mm -hmm. know, find like your three most important things, and yeah. and emphasize that, and that that'll help you tighten up your script a little bit. So maybe you can cut it from thirty minutes to like fifteen really valuable minutes or something. Mm -hmm. You know, just and that's to, just like if you really want to put all that work into it. There are still people who will just watch that video, but if you're like trying to get the the largest appeal, broadest appeal, then making it digestible like mm -hmm. and the and listenable is my yeah. advice yep. and, and cutting out you. empty space in is also key yeah. like when you're setting up a tank there are many, there are definitely times when you sit back and watch the tank for a while so like cutting out that and only keeping parts of the video where you can actually see your hand move and interact with hardscape or something like that yeah, yeah. instead and of I keeping all really the parts sitting back yeah. to the hardscape and I would really recommend if you want a good video on like how a tank is Steven's um, plant farm video, I think mm. is really good because it's very clear why he's making it. It's very clear his objectives. It's very clear like what he wanted to learn from it and what he did. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is very clear messaging. And he it's very what, clearly like, explained how minutes, he liked the minutes. lasagna substrate and the uh, yeah. foam background and all that stuff. Yep. Yeah, so that's a good one just to watch. And you don't need to edit it fancy like he does because Steven is fancier mm -hmm. than we are, you know? Yeah, I just do that shit for fun. Right, mm -hmm. but it has good messaging and good scripting. So, you know, it's it's a good thing to good thing to model yourself after yeah. until you find your own voice. So. All right, so I think, let's see. Okay, Austin's going, so. Everyone go over and visit yeah. Fantastic Freak Stream. Mm -hmm. yes, and, uh, before we do, Renee says, I have freshwater sponges growing for years in several tanks. Oh, my gosh. They do move occasionally, and they... They white, white in their light. Oh, in no light, and they are green. So they have symbiotic algae if kept in mm -hmm. light. They do seem to grow better in tanks with fish. Wow. Interesting. I want to see... Are you on the Discord, Renee? 
I hope you are because I would love to see pictures of those. Yeah, that please post, so cool. post pictures of those. Yeah. Yeah, we need to see that. That is so cool. Very cool. Always learning things. Um, yes, Austin. Everybody go see Austin next. And um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, mods. Thank you, chatters. Thank you, su super Members, chatters. Lurkers. Um, lurkers. We play crew. a crew. Thank you, Matt, for fishfam.link. Thank you mm -hmm. for making me my iOS app. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. I'm dropping the Discord link real quick. Just in yes, case. yes. Join our Discord, yes. especially Renee. We want to see those pictures. We really mm -hmm. do. We want to learn about them. Yep. So. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.